Good day, good night all. Welcome back. We have a special guest with me coming off a spectacular performance at One Lumpini. Uh, Jordan, please introduce yourself to the uh, to the listeners. Hey, uh, hey no, well, uh, my name is Jordan Godfreyton. I'm uh, 30 years old from uh, Perth, Western Australia. Uh, Muay Thai fighter. I've been training uh, for about 16, 17 years out of a gym called Kalsop Muay Thai uh, in Forestdale. Uh, but yeah, for on Friday night, had a Hell of a fight with Yodlet Pet and yeah, just back home now, settling back in and just enjoying some family time. And you look very healthy for having such <laughs> a war, sir. It was my yeah. first introduction to your fighting style and you as a, as, a, as a persona, and I was thoroughly impressed. I watched the first round, the second round, which was a little uh, more competitive, but I thought first yeah. and second, that's you, that is. Third round, he yeah. came out like a bat of hell kind of thing, and I thought, okay, if, yeah. if he gets this, then, you know, no problem. You know, Jordan's got this. And then when I heard yeah. the decision, I was like, okay, okay. It was still an entertaining mm -hmm. fight, trustfully. And yeah. even in my recap, I was saying, well, one's got to be happy with Jordan. He 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 didn't back down. He, you know, excellent footwork, the variety of strikes, the elbows. It was just like, yeah, you know, let, let's definitely get this guy back in and let's see if we can get you that 100,000 contracts into specifically mm -hmm. into one. That would be absolutely excellent. For sure, no, definitely. No, it was a good fight, man. Like you said, it was a variety of uh, of techniques thrown, <laughs> pretty much from everything from punches, kicks, knees, elbows. Um, yeah, lots of clinch. Um, though the the clinch broke the clinch up quite quickly, which was something I had to get used to. Um, but yeah, and the small gloves, they're they're exciting, man. Fuck, it's a whole another kettle of fish with those small gloves on. That's for sure. So with the four ounce gloves, then is that something that is is that totally brand new to you, or you, or have you mainly fought in like the the ten ounce upwards? Yeah, just like normally, I think they're eight ounce for my weight division. Um, but first time with like the fingerless gloves, so that was just obviously a bit different with your guard and and yes. the shots that you can land, and, and obviously what they can land back on you. But um, no, that was my first time actually fighting with the four ounce. Um, and I took the fight about four weeks ago, so I I got a pair of gloves maybe three weeks before the fight. Had a bit of a practice um, just with shadow boxing, hitting pads, hitting the bag. But yeah, essentially it was, it was pretty new for me. But at the end of the day, you got to adapt to these things. Like it's, it's a first time for everyone at some point, you know what I mean? So um, I'm definitely not making any excuses with that, but definitely something to, to practice with and definitely something to, um, to, to now get more familiar with, but it was great fun. I could tell you that much. And I was, I was actually um, quite surprised that I could wear as many shots as I did as well. Cause he ripped me in the body a lot with those small hands. Yes. And like some of them, I felt some of them felt good as well. And I, you know, when you, when you, when you condition and you feel strong, you know, and they land a shot, you're like, yeah, all right, that's a good shot. You want to give it back. But yeah. some of them, you can feel them come through. It's like, Oh, that's because of those small gloves, you know? So it's just little <laughs> things like that, but it, it was exciting, man. I had a, I had a hell of a fucking fun time in there. Um, that, that crowd was something else. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just, I was just, just blessed and grateful for the, the whole opportunity and experience to be honest. Totally. And what about your experience actually in Bangkok itself and obviously competing at the yeah. historic Lumpini Stadium? What, what was that kind of experience like? Oh, it was great, man. Like the whole, um, like I love Thailand. Like I love the Thai people, Thai culture. Um, obviously, I love Muay Thai as well. Love the Thai food, but I couldn't eat the Thai food leading up to that week just because I was trying to make weight and be healthy and making sure I had all, all my uh, the right food I was used to eating um, throughout the fight week. But I did have a rough week, man. I don't know if you heard, but I actually ended up losing my luggage um, as I landed the week oh, out. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was without my luggage for like just over two days. And then I was even in a car accident on the way from the ho from the airport to the hotel. Um, so I ended up having an accident and being on the side of the road like with no luggage for like an hour. So that was a pretty rough start. Um, there was a few other things that went on during the week, but it was a, it was a mental week, let's just say. There was a lot yeah. of... Um, Trials and tribulations and things to have to overcome, but yeah, it was it was an amazing experience. And like you said, the fighting at Lumpini is just like the pinnacle of the Muay Thai. Um, of of all like yeah, for what we all aim to achieve or to get to one day. And we see old like the the legends of the sport fighting there. Though is it the Lumpini? Um, but still, so much history just from name and and where um where so many top end, end fighters go to fight at in the Muay Thai scene, especially in Thailand. So it's just a massive opportunity. And it just even on the night, just in the change room with all the other gyms, like the crowd, just, yeah, the, just walking out from the change rooms into the ring, like under the big bright lights, 
hell of an experience. And um, yeah, it was just like I said, I just I wasn't going to go in there and get wiped out. I wasn't getting ca- carried oh. out in the stretcher. There's no fucking way, you know. That was yeah. my time to go in there and put on a fucking hard fight and uh, give your your let pet like a real hard challenge and then show the crowd exactly what I'm about and my style and what what I can do. Yeah, man, you must have got a lot more followers as, as a result of that and a lot more people sort of putting eyes on thinking, oh, okay, we got another yeah. another talent out of that, out of the Gold Coast kind of thing. Um, yeah. Actually, am I correct? Uh, is that the wrong terminology, Gold Coast? Is that a specific it area? Is, but I wasn't going to correct you, brother. That's more on the east side. <laughs> That's like Queenslanders. Not so good. I'm from I'm from like the from the west coast. I'm in Perth, Western Australia. Okay, okay. But that's all right. I wasn't going to correct you. You're still in the right part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, sir, indeed. Well, look, I mean, as you said, it was a crazy week, you know, lost yeah. luggage, yeah. accident on yeah. the way to the airport. Yeah. That was a lot of speed humps, speed bumps yeah. even. But you performed the performance. The, you know, if we didn't know about that, if we didn't know anything, we was, you know, yeah. uh, your action spoke <sighs> volume so it was a, a tremendous fight for, from both um competitors is there any yeah, idea when you might be back uh so i'm actually about to have the birth of my well my partner's about to give birth to my son in about three weeks man so any Congrats. any moment now we're just waiting for him yeah thank you um i've got a 21 month old daughter as well so obviously we we got a bit of uh, adjusting when he come when my son's born and just settling into into life here and I've taken a few weeks off work when when that uh, all comes together but I've got a big fight here in Australia yeah, at the end of the year um, probably in the end of November uh, for the WBC world title super lightweight world title yeah so I'm pushing for this fight at the moment and it's practically locked in I've just got to make sure the other party signs the dotted line because we've been through this a few times, but I've been assured this fight's happening. Um, yeah. So a bit of time off with the family. I've got a home mm-hmm. gym as well. I live very close to my gym, so I can still train. I'm not taking complete time off, but time off competing. Fights yes. for the WBC world title. If I can win that as a world champion, I'd love to come back to one championship next year fresh. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. And trustfully, we'll have Michael Chavello on 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 the on the announcements when you when you have fight for that WBC. Possibly, yeah, possibly. Uh, we, we, he, I think he announced my last fight on the same promotion. So, yeah, it very well could be the case. Excellent. We we do miss we do miss um the dulcet tones of uh, Mr. Chavello with one. That is just a one drop the ball, man. I don't know what on earth happened, but they really dropped the ball. We he should still be there now. He's one of a kind, isn't he? He's one of yeah. his one liners and yeah, no, nah, he's a uh, he's a he's a fight sports icon, Mr. Chavello. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So yeah, as I say, congratulations on the uh, you know the, the 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 new life that you're bringing in. That's more responsibility yeah. Yeah. and being a fighter yeah. as well. I mean, just being a fighter in itself, just having a relationship that's tough. But being a a father, yeah. I mean, like yeah. you're juggling so many yeah. balls, and you you've got a, a, is it a full time job that you work as well? Yeah, I work full time as well. Yeah, five five days a week, like seven to oh, fucking four. Yeah. Wow, like yeah. uh, <laughs> you gotta make it happen, man. You gotta do you it, do. you gotta do it, you know. You, you gotta make it happen, you, you know. And people people do say, like, how do you do it? And it's like it's like anything in life, if you really want something and you put the sacrifice in and you put the have the discipline, you can make anything happen, you know. And I'm very lucky my my employment it's like I, I've I've worked in physical labor jobs in the past, but now I'm actually working in an office. I'm in I'm in a man like a managerial role in a in a construction. So I can work from from the office. I can rest the body all day, um, stress the mind out. You know, have a, have a busy, stressful day, and then I can train late at night. I can train early in the morning. Um, and yeah, like I've just found balance with. Um, during COVID, I built a home gym, and that's actually when we decided I was going to have kids earlier because fight, fighting had stopped for everyone, and we didn't know what was going to happen again for okay. those couple of years. So I was like, you know what? I need somewhere to train. All down we couldn't do fuck all so i was like nah i'm gonna build a home gym i've got somewhere to move somewhere to stay mm. strong and fit i was actually matched to fight for the wbc world title uh against the, the previous champion his name was sean clancy from ireland i was matched oh, to yes. fight him. it was fight week we were only like three days out from the weigh-in and the first ever covid lockdown came and boom show was off ah. so i went into like a two and a half year sort of training camp <laughs> you could say i didn't fight 
and then just basically been busy um yeah staying fit and ready and then since since maybe about a year ago year and a half ago since our borders all unlocked and they got fucking less weird about the jab and all the rest of it um i've i think i've had five fights five wins by that last fight so that's six fights five wins since coming back from covid and i've just been wow. working back to that wbc shot so that's where I'm, I'm aiming at the moment and if i can come back then yeah after after the um after, that's when i want to come back to one but coming back to the balance, like it's just one of those things. Like when COVID ruined that first shot for me and um, we were, we had the sport initially taken away from all of us in, in Australia. Um, mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to do any physical activity. We we're all stuck at home. That's when I was like, I looked at my life and my, what I wanted and I looked at what I thought might come from this. And it was a lot of uncertainty. So I didn't think I was ever going to fight again, bro, to be honest. So I, I thought about bringing kids forwards as well, having kids a little bit earlier than I was expecting. And, I, and I, I'm glad I did because that's almost yeah. brought even so much more life and so much more positivity into yeah. our life and something more to fight for and to and to want to be better for as well. Um, but, yeah, it just comes down to balance, mate. Like having that home gym is a good one because then, like, if I come home and wanna, after work, I want to spend time with my daughter and my partner and, and do some dinner and do whatever, put yeah. over a bath and have a shower and go to bed, then I've got the gym. I can have it till fucking all night, you know. I can play my music. I can set the temperature. It doesn't matter. I can have my space. <laughs> I, can, I can do what I need to do. Same as in the morning. If, I, if I'm too tired that night, I wake up in the morning and I'll get it done. So I'm very I'm very lucky in that aspect. And I think that's what I've learned the most is it's balance as well. Like, And that's also with your training is balancing your different types of training from whether it's your strength training or your fight training, um, your conditioning, your running, your styles mm -hmm. of running, your styles of strength training, like all those things, your recovery, you know, especially it's all about balance. So if you oh, if you wanted enough, sense. mate, regardless of how much you got on your fucking plate, you make it happen. <laughs> thousand percent agree. Thousand percent agree with that. Yeah. I always utilize that phrase or that that word balance. You have to have balance. You need to. We can't be too far yeah. on the right or too far on the on the yeah. left. We've got to try and yeah. center ourselves because you. And as you say, I mean, people look at what I do and they think, "Oh my God, how does Noble do all of this stuff?" You know. Yeah. you plan you prep and plan and you you know yeah. you you sacrifice things here and you do things here to make yeah. sure that you can do what you what's necessary yeah absolutely but you can't be selfish as well like you're saying like if you have in relationships and that as well like i i I've, my family time is very precious to me as well bro you know what i mean and especially when you have little ones like that time yeah. so you only have that time once so you got to be smart with your time so you don't want to regret things at either end of the scale. You don't want to regret of what could I've become or what could I've done in, in my own dreams and aspirations to also what could have been if I had more time with my family, you know? So you got to have that balance. So you're mm -hmm. never going to have any regrets. That's where, I've, that's, yes. where I'm, that's where I'm trying to think with it anyways. Well, you're on the right path, sir. You're definitely on the right path. That's it. Let, 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 try your best, brother. That's all you can do. Try your best. <laughs> uh, ultimately, so you could, so there's no sitting back up, you know, when you, we get to the ripe old age and we say... Oh, I wish I would have pursued a, a little bit more seriously my MMA career or my Muay Thai career yeah. or my art yeah. career. You know, it's there's none of yeah. just try it, just try it, That's do your it. best. It might work, yeah. it might not work, but you at least you can say, Look, I, I tried my best. Absolutely. You'd rather, like, yeah, you'd rather fail. What if, mate? You know, because like, life's too short for all this, that regrets and shit. And you die tomorrow, you know what I mean? So just do what you love and 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 look up yeah, look after the people that that look after you and that's all you can do. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Let's rewind time a little bit. Let's throw Marty and Doc out yeah. of the Delorium and let's rewind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where, where did where did we get this passion and love for um the striking arts? Um. So my my best mate. So I, we spoke briefly before. Um. Yeah. My mate Daniel Williams. Uh. Daniel Mini T Williams. He he's fights out of Kalsop Muay Thai as well. Uh. He's a regular on the one championship fight scene. He just fought Superlek for the kickbox title on a week's notice. Um. Mm. Ended up yeah, not getting getting stopped by Superlek, but that was yeah. Superlek's just an, an animal. Um. No one's no one's gonna argue with that. He's obviously famous as well for his fights with Rod Tang, and he's been jumping between the Muay Thai and the, and the MMA in the circuit, yeah. chasing both um both top five uh rankings at different at different times. But uh, he was my he was one of my old school um first high school friends, funnily enough. And um I think we were in a health class, and he we in, uh, introduced each other, and um and we we realized we had similar friends that were a couple of years older than us. He had an older brother and I had some older friends from my primary school, we came from separate primary schools to this different high school. 
and yeah, he invited me down to the gym, and I and I, I was um, I never done any boxing or kickboxing or anything like that. I think I was about twelve, maybe thirteen years old, and just fell in love with the sport. Um, I was playing ball sports before, like soccer and um, like AFL, oh. Aussie rules football, and stuff like that. Growing up, um, but yeah, dropped both of those and just fell in love with the sport. And and I've I've been training at the same gym ever since. I've been at Cal Soc since I was 14 years old and I'm 31 years old this year. So <laughs> fucking I'm a, I'm a part of the furniture now to be honest. Yeah. With you. But, um, but yeah, like we've just, we've just been very fortunate to choose the right gym the first time and, and Darren Kurovic and, and the number of Thai coaches and, and different um, trainers we've had over the years. We've just been very, very spoiled at my gym just to have a lot of variety and a lot mm. of growth and a strong team and lots of different strong teams throughout the generations that I've been there. So it's, yeah. Um, he got me into the sport and I've, um, yeah, just been competing as a professional ever since I think I've had 44 fights now. Um, yeah, I've got a few different titles as well. Like WBC Australian title and two different weight divisions, um, and a WMC intercontinental title that I just won, which is one below the world title. So this is why I'm chasing those WBC WMC world champ world, world title fights now. So, I'm just at the brink out of it now. So I was just, this one championship fight was a last minute thing. That's a, that's the thing that people don't realize. Like I wasn't actually supposed to be fighting. I was, like I said, my son's supposed to be due in four, three weeks. Yeah. So it was only last week that I was in Thailand and it's like, it's pushing it. <laughs> but my, my partner was saying that with the same thing, like, you know what, this is a great opportunity. It's good mm. money, great opportunity to possibly win a bonus, which is really life changing, um, especially before you're having a little one. So, we just said, let's just do it. You know, let's just fucking, the weight was good. My body was feeling good after my last fight and I just wanted to go get it on. So, um, yeah, no, I just had to jump at that opportunity. But, yeah, it's been training at the same gym, same sport. Um, never a little bit of boxing with some friends, um, just like as PT work, just getting the hands more crisp. But we've been very lucky to have just such a strong group of tied trainers. Oh, you went out there. Repeat, repeat oh, that last part. That's all right. You said I was just trainers. Saying, just like, yeah, I just, yeah, just very lucky to be at the same gym um, with a group of strong trainers and, and fortunate to have chosen the right gym um, the, the, the first time and I've just been there ever since. Is there like a, a huge number of gyms and options like or is there top tier ones and there's like, <laughs> you know, just some ones that you can kick about that kind of thing? Yeah, man, we're pretty lucky. WA has been really strong for the Muay Thai for like the last 20 years. It's, we've probably got about five really strong gyms. Um, and then now we've also got anywhere from 10 to 20 other sort of um, intermediate gyms that are sort of making their way up, sort of um, starting with new fighters and that and br branches off of um, fighters from these original five, five or six strong gyms. You know, they, they go and start their own gyms and they become yeah. their own trainers and all that. So Muay Thai in Western Australia is really, really strong, really busy. Um, and just in Australia in general, <clears throat> it's a sport's grown so much and it's, yeah, it's actually um, doing very, very well at the moment. It's very popular in um, lots of shows. Every every couple of weeks, there's a fight show on. Would you say, what what would be the compa the comparative reference uh, MMA? Is that still a leader or would you say? See, um, I Muay would Thai? say in WA, we probably have more of a Muay Thai scene than an MMA scene for fight shows. There's way more Muay Thai fight shows. But the eyes are still probably more on the MMA because of the shows like the UFC and, and stuff yeah. like that. Lots of people are obviously big fans. So they watch that obviously at the pubs or the pay-per-view. Um, other than that, there's only really two MMA fight promotions in Western Australia, which is uh, Eternal, which is the main fight promotion for all of Australia, Eternal MMA. And then it's only Domination M MMA as well, which is uh originally the Muay Thai, the main Muay Thai promotion of Western Australia that's now branched into MMA only in the last two years. Yeah, and they're the um they're the owners of my gym, which is Cowsop Muay Thai, and the Thai boxing pit, which is Synergy Gym, which is Toby Smith's gym. I don't know if you know Toby Smith in the pit. Yes, yes, yes. But they're like brother sister gyms with my gym. So um yeah, they're co promoters of Domination Muay Thai and Domination MMA. But MMA as well, massive. It's growing again. It's growing. It's growing. Um, they're probably more better paid than us, even though we've got more shows. Um, mm. So it's just, it's a different sport. It's got different yeah. eyes. Um, and they've got more sponsorships as well, which I think is why they have uh, the, the better pay packets, the better eyes on the sport and all that sort of stuff. 
which is interesting. I think with what one's doing at the moment <laughs> and, and other promotions, <clears throat> pardon self, is moving it more to the major eyes, to the world sort of stage. People can yeah. look and say, oh, oh, well, you know, I like MMA, but look at this stuff. There's, there's no takedowns. These guys are either sweeping, throwing, or they're throwing elbows, knees, yeah. and punches, and, and you know.